What about sensitivity, linearity, and spatial resolution? We have already discussed these. They are among the tests conducted weekly. I talked about uniformity, which has both intrinsic and extrinsic types, and I mentioned resolution, which also has an extrinsic type. Is there an intrinsic type? Yes, there is. I will remove the kilometer and replace it with the quadrupole bar phantom. But this time, I will use the same setup. Place the quadrupole bar phantom here and replicate the exact image using the same method. That's what I mean. Then, take my image, test it, and see its details. Of course, there is a way for you to calculate. From these images, you can see what you do by multiplying by an equation called multiplying by the smallest value here, which was, for example, 2 or 2 and a half. This gives you, whether it is an equation, what is meant by it, whether it is extrinsic or intrinsic, this is an equation. Your machine can measure how many counts per minute are produced at two distances, 0 centimeters and 10 centimeters. How is this done? You take my detector and place a point source at a distance of 10 centimeters or at a distance of 0 centimeters on the surface. Then run my machine for one minute and measure the count that appears in my image. The total count in one minute is my activity. For example, if I prepared a syringe containing one millicurie and performed an acquisition of this syringe for one minute, I got a thousand counts. So I have 1,000 counts, which means my sensitivity is 1,000 counts per minute for one millicurie. This sensitivity is measured on the surface of the crystal and at a distance of 10 centimeters from the crystal. This is the sensitivity. There is also something called count rate capability. Do you remember what we were talking about a little while ago, which is the idea of dead time? The idea is that you bring a point source closer to the crystal. If you bring it too close, what will happen? Well, come on. I know this part is a bit tedious. Here, I have a thought. Look here. This is the maximum count rate, which is the count rate capability. You want to see what the highest count is that the crystal can detect. How do you do this? You bring a point source and move it towards the crystal without a collimator. At a certain point, it will give you a very high value of counts. The closer you get, the more the count increases and your sensitivity improves until what happens? A drop occurs. Why does this drop happen, doctors? Because of the distance. Now look at this data. Forget about the material and all that. It's just to save time. The individual in question is quite clearly seen holding a device known as a dosimeter, which is used for measuring exposure to ionizing radiation. He is meticulously making various adjustments to the head. This holder is used to place a small source of activity, something like 18 megabecquerels, which is a very small amount, measured in microcuries. You can see it starts to get closer, and it keeps taking pictures. Look, this monitor is capturing images. It takes a series of dynamic images. See these pictures here. This is the image we will discuss. I keep saying, look, because the count here keeps increasing until it reaches a certain area where the count hits a maximum the highest point, and then it drops. You see how the photomultiplier tube starts to show. You can't see it anymore. Look at how the curve behaves. The closer it gets, the higher the count goes until it reaches a certain point, which is the highest count you can achieve, and then it drops. 
this drop happens to give the food. Ah, things are clearer now. Look. Now let's take a look at another test. Let us carefully and thoroughly examine this particular video in order to better understand the topic of quality control for you. Please observe closely. This is indeed the uniformity test, right? This is the calorimeter. See the pot outside? This is the calorimeter. Come here and look. And this is the cobalt. Do you see it? Yes, this is the cobalt sheet. Do you see how much it is? Do you see exactly how you are really actually doing? Ooh. We took the nucleus that is extended under distilled water. This is the second method I told you about if there is no cobalt flat source. This is the calibrator we talked about, and the activity is automatically measured here in a very nice way. This is the fume hood where it is prepared, and this is the syringe shield where the activity is placed. Then it starts injecting, or rather placing the radioactive material inside the flat source, and then it mixes it well to ensure that there is a uniform distribution. It keeps mixing to ensure that there is good mixing of the radioactive material inside the flat source. So when it takes pictures, it can be assured that there is a uniform distribution of the radioactive material. Come on, let's take a look at The phantom can be placed or you can use both crystals together. They can image both together like this, close up. Hey, email, so you can indeed see this picture, the picture that will come out. These are all acquisition parameters that are crucial for our issue. This image starts to adjust the window level. Carefully to see if there are any potential areas with hypo-intensity or areas with problems such as cracks or other issues or anything else. I think the image has become a bit clearer. Okay. Okay. So just the resolution we see right here is not the system. Apologies about that right now. This coordinate bar is the blue one. See the line bears. This is the danger. This is the line bears at 4.2. Look at these gaps that are present. 2.5, 3.18, 4.2, 2.12. This coordinate bar is 4.2, 2.12. Here, look, an old man is carrying the kilometer that was installed. He carries it in a certain way, and then he will work here. Will he work with intrinsic or extrinsic? Intrinsic, intrinsic, beautiful. What is this? He puts the image. He puts the coordinate bar. Will he put the cobalt sheet or the point source? Point source, point source. Look at this holder to place the point source at a large distance from it.
It means that when I do this test, I hang from the ceiling to know how to measure this distance because I unfortunately don't have that holder, okay? Come, let's look at the picture. Do you see where I placed the point source? Do you see? It's more than five, Yusuf. The fold view, Yusuf. The fold view is about 40 centimeters. So five times four is two meters. Do you see what the picture shows? Doctors, do you see what this is? Can anyone tell me what this is? The photo peak, yes, the photo peak is what we were talking about. Look at this shape. This is the component and this is the photo peak. Do you see what it does? What does it do? This is the energy resolution. At first, then the image appears. He takes a specific angle to ensure that when he changes the angle, all parts of the crystal have the same resolution with no differences, and the image appears in this way. Then he performs a visual assessment to see if he can observe lime beards or not. Okay, this is intrinsic. For extrinsic, you would place the cobalt in a flat source and follow the same procedure. There is something called sensitivity. You want to see the count per second that I was talking about earlier. They measure sensitivity by using a dish with some water and placing a specific radioactive materials activity in it. Or you can use a syringe. Look here. They place it at distances of 0 and 10 centimeters. Of course, sensitivity is measured in coulombs. Look here, doctor. Low energy, high resolution. That's the coulomb meter. Low energy, high resolution. Now what will happen is they will place the beta dish ready, add some saline and water, or whatever else is needed. Then they add water to it and start placing the activity of the radioactive material. They prepare it and know exactly what the activity will be. And one millicury is enough. Okay. A specific way just to feel reassured. And then after that he can proceed, meaning everything is fine. Then prepare the plastic sheet to prevent contamination. Take the beta dish and start placing it on the chabos here to begin imaging. This is obviously a setup to see if there is any tilting or something in the collimator, meaning it must be at a zero angle. If it is set at 10 centimeters, something should be placed such that the distance between it and the collimator is 10 centimeters, and then the detector is placed on top in this way. I want you all to enjoy physics. I mean, physics has now become something that will really take your breath away. I clearly feel the enjoyment. I feel like I will run your throats. God bless. The ice begins. It starts to generate the image in this way. This image, of course, begins to calculate how much. All right. And then it checks what has come out. It's about a request or demand, you know? That's it. The topic becomes like that with a voice request. I mean, based on that, of course, it can be recalculated using something that can be done. Of course, it is done annually. I mean, but it is possible that he can conduct this test annually. But the, the uniformity and resolution tests are conducted regularly on a weekly basis. And there is also an important test called the specific center of rotation, which you will find in the presentation. Are you able to determine if the gamma camera or the head of the gamma camera maintains the same center of rotation when you take a spectrum from every view or angle as the camera moves? Do you see the center point as the same point 
or is there a shift? I mean, while the camera is moving around the patient, in this way, do you see that same point in its X and Y coordinates unchanged, or is there a change? You shouldn't see variations. They should be the same. If I am at the same distance from the head, I see this point here at coordinates X and Y. So if there's a variation or a shift when it comes to reconstructing the images, they won't be the same. If there's a shift in the A point or in the point that he sees, for example, do you remember the image we talked about last time when we discussed the aspect? Now you see this point here, this is the head. And this is the camera. The camera sees this point here at the center at this specific X and this specific Y. This camera sees this point and this camera sees that point. But if I am now at this angle, there is a difference in the angle. Yes, there is a difference in the angle, but the center of my machine must remain the same. My center must remain constant. If there is a difference, it is always due to the machine itself. The machine itself is different from the detector. The detector of the machine is tested with something called COR, or the center of rotation test. How is the center of rotation test performed? And how is the OL test conducted? He brings a point source and places it at the center between the two heads of the gamma camera, ensuring that the center of rotation is precisely adjusted, meaning he measures the distance from the center. You see, sir, he places the source on a specific holder and checks the distance between it and the surface of the crystal above and the surface of the collimator below, ensuring it is exactly in the center. Then he descends to take an acquisition and a spec acquisition, and he starts calculating in a certain way the X and Y offsets, which are the locations of my center. Here, a set of acquisitions is taken, as if capturing the patient from above or imaging the point source. Look, it's taking an angle. Here is another angle. Each angle starts to take a certain count. This is another method but just because. It rotates around the point source like this. He does it in a certain way, starting to produce it like this. Yes, that's it. It checks the amount of change, whether there is an offset, or if the line represents the location, or pixel value, or the position of the pixel regarding your image. It assesses whether there has been a change, doing this in the X and Y directions, and sees how much offset is allowed, for example, around 2 millimeters, not more than that. If this offset exceeds that value, it starts indicating that there is a problem with the center of rotation of the machine. This is, of course, done with different kilovoltage settings, as the different kilovoltage settings are less than the different kilovoltage settings because there is a higher LED ratio due to the larger thickness, which can affect the mechanical movement of the spectrometer. Is that clear, doctors? I think that covers all the quality points. Is there any problem with it? Are things clear? May I just ask you a question, please? When we calculated the intrinsic uniformity, intrinsic uniformity, no, we used a point source. We did not use intrinsic newformity, intrinsic new uses a Nakulin source. Nice. Again, I am currently, no, no, sir, no, sir, at your service, of course, the intrinsic, I work without a collimator. Nice. 
Do you understand me? Okay, yes, yes. All right. If I use this cobalt, first of all, its activity is very high. 15 milli curies. If its activity is high, then to stabilize it, it must be close to the surface of the collimator, right? Right. So if I place a cobalt sheet with an activity of 15 millicuries on the surface of the crystal, which does not have a collimator, will I see anything? So, I need to keep it at a distance, and also the activity of it. Can you imagine? Cobalt has an activity of 15 millicuri. The point sources, you know, doctor, reach about 50 microcuri. Microcuri means something very, very small, regarding the topic I was talking about earlier. Thank you. Thank you. I... Now... I want to talk about the topic of home imaging in fact the topic of the house tea is that I am dealing with a radioactive substance this radioactive substance is milli which is used in fluorodeoxyglucose that produces positrons what does it produce positrons we said I have an excess number of protons it transforms into a neutron and the beta plus, does the beta plus stop? No, it doesn't stop. It travels a few millimeters, collides with an electron, and gives you two gamma photons, each at 180 degrees to the other. Right. We rely on this technique in imaging. The energy of the outgoing photon is 511 kiloelectron volts. They told you to use it in the camera, but sodium cannot stop the 511. It's not efficient to stop it. So what do we do? They said we need to design something that fits the idea we are discussing. So what will we do? We will create the PET machine or the positron emission tomography machine. Okay, but you said that the two gamma photons are coming out at 180 degrees. So I need to have a detector here and a detector here, right? To detect the two that are coming, right? Okay, but I also have the possibility that the photon could come out like this, or like this, or like this. Just make a variety of different types of detectors. You shouldn't just make two detectors, but rather a variety of different types of detectors. All right, let's create this variety of range. Here is the material. And here is the variety of range. And here are our detectors. Each one faces the other. So the gamma photon that comes out and heads here will meet here. Now, I will detect this photon regardless of the angle it comes from or the direction it is moving in. It is moving at 180 degrees, but it is going here and going there. So I will do it. Okay, great. Now this line, I call my line of response the line of response. Now, the crystal I need to consider in this context is required to possess specific properties in order to effectively halt the progress of 511 kilo electron volts in a manner that is efficient and effective. The first and question is whether you expect its attenuation coefficient to be high or low, high. The attenuation means the scattering coefficient. What does that mean? It means that when a photon comes into contact with it, it gets completely absorbed by the material in a significant way. So the higher the attenuation coefficient, the better the crystal can stop the photon that hits it. Therefore, when this photon hits the crystal, it will generate the phenomenon known as the scintillation we are talking about, and it must be emitted from the material. 
The light photon that comes out should be significantly large, not small. If it's small, I will indeed have to go to a large radioactive material. No, even in the house, you will find that the radioactive material is definitely low. So, you want the light photon that comes out. Every photon hitting the crystal should have a large quantity so that you don't have to increase the activity too much. You want the light photon resulting from the scintillation to be large, not small. So, the first thing is that the attenuation should be high and the light photon that comes out should be high. What else? The electron that you hit inside the crystal takes a certain amount of time to come out. This time is very short. If it were long in the crystal, it would delay the process or reduce the sensitivity of the crystal. So, you need this time for the electron to be very small. Indeed, this is crucial. In fact, the process is quite sensitive. It remains very small so that you can start taking the next one and the next one and the next one, the incoming photon. After that, this would be the third property, so you can stop the photon.